Mercury exhibits phases just like Venus or the moon. It has an angular size of around 4.5 to 13. That's just a fraction of Jupiter. In this video, I'd like to present a few tips and tricks that I've learned to help me photograph Mercury. And hopefully it'll help you on your journey. If you're lucky enough to have several nights of good weather, I suggest polar aligning your scope the night before you plan to photograph it. Having a really well aligned telescope mount is going to help you a lot. Plate solving software is not going to do you a whole lot of good because there's still a lot of daylight in the evening sky as the sun sets. And this is for the eastern elongation. I used a combination of finder scopes. I used two uh, different ones, and uh, I had considered putting my tail rad on there also, just for extra accuracy. You don't want to knock one out of alignment and not have a second option. A lot of visual guys will use this method, and it's really good for quickly spotting mercury. There are a number of really good applications you can get for your phone or tablet or what have you for the sky that include a artificial reality. Here I'm using Sky Guide, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to locate Mercury before my eyes are capable of doing that, so I can get pointed in a general location. And there's even a chance I might spot it through one of my finders, and be able to align a little bit early. The earliest you can align on Mercury, the higher the elevation, and you don't have a big window of time, so you need to be on it just as soon as possible. Another tip, if, if you're just looking for it visually or you have like a diagonal with a flip mirror, that sort of thing, a lot of people will use a red filter because it helps knock down the, uh, the brightness of the sky and helps you locate Mercury. So that's a good trick too. If you're approaching Mercury with a one-shot color camera, you absolutely must have an ADC or atmospheric dispersion corrector. The seeing, even at greatest elongation, at less than 30 degrees is just absolutely terrible in most cases. You're looking through a lot of atmosphere and you definitely need all the help you can get. If you're using a mono camera, then the key is an IR pass filter. And that's going to help you cut through that bad atmosphere and it's probably the best approach at photographing mercury. So if you have a mono camera, then an IR pass filter is the ticket. Unless you're using a really large aperture telescope, you're not going to get a whole lot of surface detail anyway. So integration time doesn't matter. Just try to shoot the highest volume of frames you can get at a particular time, um, depending on your file size capacity of your hardware. With a modest telescope, you should at least be able to make out what phase Mercury's in at the moment, and you should get a fairly clean edge along the, the surface of the planet. Focusing on Mercury is, a, is real challenging. Uh, I live near the ocean, so I got a lot of atmospheric disturbance, and typically things are pretty wobbly at high focal lengths. So, the only advice I can give you, if you're watching this video in 2022 for the greatest eastern elongation, then you're lucky because the star Sirius is out west in the process of setting as the evening, uh, as the sun sets. And it'll be visible before anything else pretty much. But you'll be able to focus on it and then quickly slew back over to, your, uh, to the location that you're looking for Mercury. Um, depending on what time of the year, if you're watching this video, um, just look for a bright object. If the moon's available, that's a good target. Um, anything at infinity that you can focus on prior to focusing on Mercury. A shark cap, fire capture, and, and that sort of thing has focusing tools. Um, I'm not sure how much I rely on them. I have used them though, but uh, nothing beats a, an available star for, for focus. For reference, I'm using a 180 Maxitov with an effective focal length of 2,700 millimeters. That's combined with the ZWO ASI 290. And I was at 
320 on ROI, just to give you an idea. And, and still, it was really small. So you're going to need to be way out there. Um, I didn't use a Barlow because the atmosphere was so bad. The sing was just too bad for, for that type of magnification. If you can get away with it, great. Um, over the course of the three nights I was able to look at it, there's, there's no way that was going to be an option for me. Be mindful of scope acclimation also. I mentioned earlier leaving the scope out from the night before, um, assuming you got a good polar alignment, but you need to be really mindful of acclimation. You don't need to be trying to radiate heat off the scope um, in the fleeting moments you have to shoot mercury. It was named after the messenger god for a reason. Um, you don't have a whole lot of time to, to work with it, so you need to be well prepared and you don't need to be caught with your pants down with something like that because uh, it'll catch you. Um, don't go running outside with a telescope or that sort of thing. Give yourself time. Probably the best image I've seen of Mercury was by Damien Peach. It's just amazing. Um, I haven't written him to get permission to show it here, so you'll have to look that up. But um, he got a little bit of surface detail and, and his edge is really clean. Um, but... I did best I could with what I had and, and my location, and I present to you the greatest eastern elongation of mercury in the year 2022. I hope these tips and tricks were helpful to you, maybe um, brought something up that you ever looked. In any event, if you're, if you're taking this on visually or photographically, good luck to you, and I wish you nothing but clear skies.